Hey everyone, it's Scott and Rita, and this is our Cosmic Dialogue. If you're not familiar with it, we speak from the future and um, we come up with a really good insights with um, our Cosmic Dialogue. We let the future come to us through this dialogue and um, it's probably like number 58 for us. So we've been doing this for a full year, but we're gonna go in the future and talk to you about starting our nonprofit and where things are at in the future with the nonprofit that we're starting called the Love Economy Press Foundation. So um, Rita, let's just start and let's just go into the future, um, let's say a year and tell everybody what's happening so that you, everyone gets an idea of all the things that are going to happen that when we speak in the future, they really already have happened because we live in this consciousness where time is we experience linear time, but things have already happened. So that's what we bring in. So we'll tell a little bit about our past through this and what we felt through. But um, it's a year from now. We started a nonprofit. Take it away. Okay. Um, yeah, we we didn't have any idea what we were doing. So it was just a a feeling that we needed to follow. We we had been essentially rejected by the world, which I think a lot of people feel. And clearly the consumer economy was not working for hardly anyone. And um, we decided to just be the hands and feet of the new way of being and of course we didn't know how that was going to go because it doesn't exist, didn't exist yet on earth. But we followed our guidance and we um, felt through all of our insecurities about it, not knowing, we just jumping in and trying it out. Um, and that was, it just, taking one next step was empowering. And so allowing people to see that that's really how you create new things, new life, new, um, uh, well, new um, uh, nonprofit organizations, you just do it. So that has fueled a lot of, of things that we couldn't have predicted. So what are, what are the, some of the things that you experienced in that um, working through all of the not knowing parts? Well, I think when we had a conversation a year ago, just about starting this nonprofit, um, we needed to learn that we needed to just be present and maybe get a little more I guess grandiose about the idea. We needed to actually feel through things through our experience. We've been doing this cosmic dialogue for nearly a year, feeling through all our feelings, feeling through all the world, and then finding that things would come through to us. And then all of a sudden we kind of switched and we realized that, oh, there's a book that came out, this what it means to serve book. And then we realized, you know, this is far too important for us to stay in this, what is this crazy world or this black hole that we talk about in the book? What are they gonna think of us? Who's not gonna like us anymore? And, and we had to really get over that. We had to get through this and say, who are we to deny this great energy, force, knowledge that's just coming through through our voices through our works through your art through through um my my healing ideas we're being offered this opportunity and we just we're basically the hands and feet of it and um it's like a calling that comes through you and and once we kind of cleared away all that that gunk of society and the gunk of um judgment from the world and the gunk of the judgment of um are they too are are they this are they christian are they um new age are they buddhist are they this what the heck are they talking about and just let that be and let people feel that and experience that we really understood that 
it's far more important and we can't discard this idea of starting this nonprofit who also of our friends have started. I have a few friends who started nonprofits and I've helped start a few others, but who else right now is doing this? And um, who are we to just discard this and listen to the world that's trying to tear down every bit of us. And we had to feel through it. We had to have our collapses. We had to have our courageous quitting. We had to have our own experiments. And we did that for a full year. And we allowed that. And these great things came through. And when these great things came through and we heard testimonials after testimonials, of like, wow, this is like the way I've been looking for. This is the attitude I've been looking for. We knew that that was something special. And as we kept calling and going down this rabbit hole, who are we to deny it? Who are we to discard this just because we think the world is going to have a judgment on us? So, um, and, and we had to get done. Guess, yeah, guess what? We had to just get done with, with caring who was rejecting us individually, uh, collectively. We, we had to go through, like every time we got rejected, it was like a gift for us to feel through that for the purpose of getting done with caring and and to and then to look at okay you have you have this life that's built on consuming buying more being afraid of what's what you're gonna have in your bank account so that you can buy more so that you can have more stuff that, and and yet your relationships are either non-existent and you're lonely or your life is just very repetitive and average because you're going to a job that you don't especially like but it gives you that money that helps you buy more and and you have the nerve to reject what is beyond that that's kind of weird you, you have the, you have the, yeah, I don't like saying nerve, but there it is. <laughs> and also, I think that like, once we realized that, that this was an important message and we realized, okay, we're the hands and feet, it's coming to us. We're also the hands and feet of this message and we have to follow that too. If we're going to be posting this, we've always talked about that, I changed me first and and so starting this whole nonprofit is part of that exercise of changing us first and um, letting us go boldly forward and to really share what else is possible. And um, cause I know I have friends who are stuck in jobs they dislike. I have friends who are lonely. I have, um, you know, friends and family who are at each other's throats. And, you know, there's a society that doesn't help when it comes to like consumerism and debt and all of these other things that, um, what are the alternatives? And, and um, here we were offered this opportunity because it just came through us through our, I guess, I guess through our dedication because we didn't know what else to do. Um, so we stuck yeah. with it. Right. And, um, it was nothing noble. We just didn't know what else to do. It just wasn't working the way it is. So we'll try something different. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's been a year and we've learned that, um, you know, the nonprofit grants, um, it's a granting organization. And a year from ago, we decided it was going to be a grant organization where a third of the money would go to Creative Works. A third would go to administrative and marketing techniques and another third would be printing, publishing and outreach. And we operated that as a small nonprofit. We'll probably operate that for continually until we graduate from that small nonprofit. But we were up front right away. Yes, any donations are gonna go to creation of works. And right now we have four books. It's been a year, we have four books out there. Um, Kindle, print, PDF, and as much as possible, whenever we're asked and with funds available, those books can be free. And um, so, but also the grants and things help provide, you know, creative works to come through. So it takes the burden off of um, an artist or creator or an administrator. So they can also like live their life and, and 
you know, be able to do those things and still eat and, and still do this work. It's, um, what a great thing. And, um, it frees us from that, that, um, what is it, the black hole. And, um, you know, people are, you know, first, first there was a very radical point of view about like, oh, so not only, not 10% is going to go to administrative costs. No, because this is too important. We need to really get the word out. And so um, a corporation can spend their very last dime, very last penny um, till they're broke to get their message out. Um, but sometimes- well, that, that same person will also be completely devoted to giving all their money to the richest person in the history of the world who is single-handedly creating a dystopia for us all to live in which we well it's not single-handed because we're all uh, assisting it but con being concerned about how the little bit of uh, the, the pocket change is, is being spent in our <laughs> nonprofit. That's the disconnect, the, the illogic that we are up against. Yeah, and I, I think the, in the last year we've been really good and positive about educating folks that there's another way to think of this. You know, this opportunity too, just like you said that, yeah, we can spend all of our money at the big box stores and purchase all these little goods and things and feel good about ourselves because we've saved money, but are we feed, what are, who are we feeding? Do you know who you're feeding? Are you feeding people at the top of a corporate chain that, um, so we've done a good job in the last year, really sharing that when your friends and your family and the people you love and care about are engaged in noble causes, this is, we're also changing a culture to know that a noble cause um, can have the same kind of effect, um, you know, and it doesn't, we aren't twisting, we're, we're authentic, we're upfront, we're not twisting this reality of, oh, it's affordable and everyone does this, everyone goes to the big box store to buy their holiday gifts or whatever. And, and it's, it's absurd, like you said, it's absurd. People would rather do that at times than invest in you know, a nonprofit that, that distributes love and truth, that gives them free videos, free content, free books, free... A new way of being. A new way of being. How's that? Yeah. And um, so it's, 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 I'm really charged that many people are seeing that now. It is this new way of being and um, the world is difficult the outside world is difficult and throws our ju judgments on us all the time. And you and I got to break down first through all this breaking down and having our breakdowns, being the experimenters, being the ones who, who were dedicated in our quitting, I guess, because we had, you know, we were, didn't know what else to do. So, yeah. Well, we were given the gift of nothing working. So this is where we went. And really the, the resistance from the outside was relatively short, which is how it always happens. When you're afraid of something, just step into it and it's never as bad as you think it's gonna be. And the more you, f you fear it and step back from it, the longer it will be perpetuated. But as soon as you just step in and say, okay, you don't like it, I'm still doing it. It goes away like a bully that it is. <laughs> so it, it, it was a relatively short time getting people on board and getting it started once the momentum was, was going. And you were wonderful in just doing all of the administrative stuff to make it exist to go from an idea into a reality and one of our main messages is that um ev everybody involved has a gift and we accept that we we let people run free in their gifts 
because we had already done it for a year and we just continue doing that. And that's our, really our primary objective is just run free in your gifts. Most definitely. And um, yeah, I like what you were saying about like how early on it was a little more difficult and then later on it's, it's just not as difficult. It, it took a little time. And even for me, it took some time before I became a lot more forthright. And now I'm like, you know, a year later, you can see me on this video. I'm pretty forthright about saying this is, this is a mission. We're the hands and feet. There's no question. Um, I know there are judgments from the world. I know there always will be judgments from the world, but this is too important. And so I want other people to feel like that about anything that they experience in their life, their gifts, their talents, their, their creativity, their, um, their own adherence to their own authority in life, that those things are so much more important than the world. You know, you, if you trade away that, um, that's the, you don't have anything. What do you have? You might have money. You might have a savings account. You might, but are you willing to trade away your own authority to a black hole of consumption or the, insert the blank industrial complex that just kind of emerges upon us. And um, are you willing to be a spokesperson to throw the industrial complex of whatever onto a friend, onto a person that you love, because that's just what you do? Um, that doesn't work anymore. And it's the, not gonna work anymore. I'm going to name the industrial complex. <laughs> oh, good. The obviously the military industrial complex, the hate industrial complex, the medical industrial complex, the academic industrial complex, uh, meaning universities, the university system, the political industrial complex, um, and that's just a start. The, there's a whole um, personalized industrial complex as well with all of the garbage that people project out at each other yeah the self-help industrial complex yeah. as well with how we make people into gurus and um we follow gurus or we follow self-help experts um, who refer us to these industrial complexes to solve our problems um right and, and it's 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 absurd and um yeah, we, we may, we, but part of our mission is to be the radical revival of love and truth. And if we're to be the radical revival of love and truth and this love economy, we got to throw it against the wall and show it for what it is. And um, turn over tables, um, be a little forthright because it's so important. And it's so much more important than our fear, than the fear we have. Um, political industrial complex of how it keeps us so polarized. So polarized or, you know, we, we withhold love from someone just because they have a different political candidate that they support. Um, you know, of course we can have our own viewpoints and our own opinions, but we withhold love. We just, we take out that transaction of what this love economy can do for us. It doesn't work. No, it doesn't. But it works for some, which is why it's uh, perpetuated. And uh, yeah, we would prefer not to imbibe. <laughs> I like that statement. Prefer not to imbibe. Uh, nothing <laughs> to do with, with um, you know, beer, wine, whatever, fruits of the vine. Um, but still it's, you know, we, it's not a river we need to um, drink from. Yeah. You know, and we've made a choice and um, all we do is we show the example and we show an experiment and we show what, what is learned through us. It's, it's not necessarily us. It's just what's learned through us and through our experience. And um, we have, four books out now a year after starting and you know of course what it means to serve we've got a, something on relationships there's another book on um you know the whole academic cultural 
um, differences of learning and grace, what that means, and then some things about dreams. So um, I'd say in a year we've done quite a bit and we've been so very grateful to continue this work through this year and we've got more and more coming. So um, yeah, I wouldn't trade it. Yeah, right. So yeah, and if people want to continue, please continue all your support, your love, your wishes, your, um, your own examples of engaging in this love economy. Um, yeah, it's um, Love Economy Press Foundation, loveeconomypress.org. And um, yeah, we're so, so grateful to be the hands and feet of this message and this work. So continues. Yes, and, and grateful for everyone who is willing to share their gifts and, and really discover their gifts through having a place to share it. That's been the, the most incredible thing to watch. Hmm. Yeah, and it's also been fun just to sh see how Rita and I change and Rita and I shed, um, you know, these ideas of the world creeping in. It's, it's, it's a great, it's, it's a great feeling and, um, you know, you, you feel like you're more, you're in the river of your own mission and who doesn't want that? Mm-hmm. Yep. Change is sexy. Change is sexy. I love it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Quoting your books again. So. Yes. <laughs> love that. I love that. So. Anything else you want to share? This rebound from a year of starting Love Economy Press. Ah, uh, just uh, come aboard. Yeah. Yep. Join the fun. Join the ride. Find out what it means for you to serve love and truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All it right. is an individual um, journey. Thank you, Rita. Thank you.